Hello everyone and welcome to this uh, BEC podcast. My name is Rasmus Berg and uh, happy to again invite Marcus Ellis, Lauren Smith to the podcast studio. Guys, I don't know, I think it's the third time already. Uh, at least it's the second time, but I think it's the third time. Happy to have you here, guys. Marcus and Lauren, this is recorded at the end of April during the European Championships. Um, the past 16 months or so has been different for, for everybody. Uh, but it actually seems like you guys are still where you were before COVID hit. Marcus, how come? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, you know, being truthfully honest, we haven't found it easy, just like I'm sure everybody else. Um, but, you know, we're still highly motivated. Uh, and there's still so much we want to achieve in badminton. So I think even though the break has been so long, we've managed to keep ourselves going um, and keep the morale really high uh, because we know there's still things that we want to achieve in badminton that we haven't got there yet. What is it? Well, the Olympics is the big one on the horizon. Uh, you know, I think for badminton players especially, that's just a huge event. Um, it's every four years as well. And I think, you know, the way that we've been going, the way that we've gone before COVID, uh, we can definitely go there and do something. Um, beyond that, there's Worlds actually not that far down the line as well. Uh, you know, and then more Commonwealth Championships. And as the badminton calendar always does, there'll just be more and more uh, opportunities, more and more tournaments, hopefully back on. Uh, you know, we'd love to climb the rankings more. And um, yeah, we're still like very ambitious in, in what we want to achieve. Marcus, uh, for, for the first time, we will have Olympics in, in the end of July and then the World Championships end of November. And of course, a uh, bunch of tournaments in between. Is it a good thing or a bad thing that we actually have two major championships within four months? I think the gap between them is is more than enough. Um, you know, it's a great opportunity for everyone to to perform again. Um, I think the biggest thing is the rest of the calendar. You know, making sure that we get the right balance. You know, trying to cram everything in and players feeling obliged to travel every single week. You know, after having so long off, maybe it's not the most sensible thing. But for me, having the the Olympics in July and the World Championships towards the end of the year, for me, it's, it's, not, it's not a big issue. What happens on court is one thing, but of course also COVID also led to a lot of action off court, uh, especially for, for you. Uh, as far as we could see on social media, including Marcus a lot, uh, which I know we a lot of we actually appreciate it, Marcus, thank you for that. But, but Lauren and, and Marcus, what, what has been the reason for, for sharing so much of your life, of course, of course, there is a commercial, if you want to talk about it or not, there's a commercial aspect, that's one thing. But you also need to do it because you like it. But but what is the main reason of actually engaging so much as we have seen, especially you do, Lauren? Um, you know, it definitely wasn't commercial uh, and still isn't really commercial, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, it was, you know, I was at home, I had a lot of time. I started to share what I was doing. Um, it was something fun throughout the day. You know, we were in our house for, three months or something and you know we trained twice a day still but it was you know it was something to entertain me and actually being away from tournaments being away from the fans was something I really missed and so it was nice to kind of connect uh, and you know I've been really lucky in that it's grown quite well and I've got quite a good kind of following and and now I actually get quite a lot of sac satisfaction from trying to share badminton a little bit you know here's some training things that I do or you could do and I'd love to raise the badminton's profile, especially in the UK, because I think um, it's a sport that isn't seen enough in the mainstream media. Um, but mainly, it's just a lot of fun. Uh, you know, um, I've definitely noticed as training gets harder, sometimes my posts are a little bit less silly because I'm more tired. <laughs> but you can see that you know when I have a lot of time or when I'm stuck in a hotel room, there's just silliness going on. But it's um, it's nice to be able to share my personality, and um, you know, it's it's all been quite fun for me and not really a, a job in anywhere. Maybe more for Marcus filming it. <laughs> yeah, but, that was, but that was actually my follow-up question because Marcus, one thing is, is to see uh, an on-court partner trying to build a commercial brand. I believe you, Lauren, when you say it's not, it's not only commercial, but of course there are commercial values to it. But how is it also to see the off-court partner actually engaging so much, giving so much of herself and of course, also at some point, including you, not only by recording, but actually also in the videos, sharing private stuff like, okay, you, you have your own poppy, uh, Luna. Um, everybody knows her if you follow Lauren, I'm 100% <laughs> sure of that. But how is it, Marcus, to be like going from being, uh, not the secret partner, you understand what I mean, I guess, but actually being like, okay, now we're exposed. Yeah, you know, I think 
for me that was it's a very big change because I am I am quite a private person and I I always have been never been one to share everything that I'm doing um until very recently if you looked on my Instagram you wouldn't know what I was doing where I was and you know that's kind of that is how I liked it that's just kind of like the sort of person I was um and still am to a to a point but you know I think whatever Lauren does she she will do it 100% she won't like she won't half ass the whatever it is uh, and I think through through lockdown it you know it was something that she could kind of throw herself at and end up ended up really enjoying um you know it still doesn't come particularly natural to me but you know as I've seen you know her following grow and you know some of the comments that she gets actually people are really interested and for me that was something I never thought that people wanted to see um outside of badminton especially you know outside of a tournament of people interested in what you're doing at home and actually they really are um even if it seems like a an everyday thing um so yeah I've I've you know I've been a cameraman for for a lot of it but you know sometimes I get involved and you know it's it, it's fun isn't it I Cor hope so <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong here but but it seems like Marcus you're more like the one I would like to share some exercise show how I do these kind of things where Lauren you are opening up to sustainability for instance uh, am I wrong if, if I phrase it like that no I think um you know I'm maybe a little bit more professional about not professional but I keep it a lot towards badminton, like I said. Um, but I have to, you know, take my hat off to Lauren. She's very good at using her profile to raise questions, awareness for things that she's actually passionate about. And you know, I'm sure she can tell you herself. You know, she's met some really interesting people who have, you know, have even said to her, you know, you know, we'd love to work with you at some point in the future. You know, and th for me that blows my mind that you know something like that can come from a from a social media interaction but you know that that is the way the world works now and you know it's it's something you have to get on board with can you align us a bit on that one alone um yeah i mean <coughs> so if we focus on the sustainability side of things um i actually connected with a, a a basis who are British Association of Sustainability and Sport. So I connected with them through lockdown and um, kind of got on board with a lot of their webinars um, and then hosted one. And, you know, they're a company that um, put a lot of effort into raising the awareness of sustainability in sport and working with uh, governing bodies and things like that. And, you know, for me and the, com the communications I've had with them, it is something in the future that I hope, you know, maybe I could go down that route because like you say, you know, it's, I'm really passionate about sustainability and I'm really passionate about sport. And to find an, a group that, that goes hand in hand with is really exciting. Um, and there's just loads of brands that I've kind of discovered and I would have thought would never have any interest in working with me uh, or, you know, for me to help raise their profile and things and, and you know it's very satisfying and it's that balance of me sharing the badminton stuff to sharing the sustainability stuff because I know that people if I just shared sustainability that wouldn't really be what people want to see but to actually put it in you know once a week or something people are engaging with it and it's really exciting because it's something that is not talked about from a sports stance enough um, and yeah, just, you know, those doors opening for me has, has been really exciting and um, definitely, hopefully, you know, in terms of my future career, um, something that can benefit me. So definitely, as you said, there is commercial value uh, in it, um, but it's, it's all about what kind of means a lot to me and the things I'm passionate about still. One thing that also made the engagement, but probably not for you guys in a positive way, uh, that was the All England. Um, <clears throat> it was not on my list actually of topics uh, before you entered, but but we cannot not talk about it, Marcus. Uh, we saw the Indonesian team were were withdrawn for from the tournament. The same for for Nishlan Yid from Turkey. Uh, a lot of social media rumbling around this. Uh, how was it to be you guys uh, doing that week? Because it was not only BWF and uh, Baptist New Baptist getting getting hit by comments. It was basically also you guys. Yeah, I think you know that week. He you just have to accept it for, for what it was. You know, there, there were some truly horrible things said. Um, and, you know, it's very easy to hide behind the screen and write things like that. And, and you know, some people will really take that to heart. And I think people don't always realize, you know, the, da the danger behind, you know, a few words that you type on, a, on your phone can actually really impact somebody. Um, I, I personally didn't have a have an, well, I had an issue with it but it, it didn't particularly bother me um, but I saw people who it did bother and you know 
it made me a bit angry, to be honest, because, uh, you know, that shouldn't really happen. Um, of course, the situation, it, it sucked. It was, it really did. You know, I felt for the Indonesian players uh, and the Turkish players as much as, as much as anyone. You know, I didn't want, I wanted them to play. Um, and it, was, it wasn't the same tournament without them. Uh, but they were just, they're just our laws at the moment. And that's just, that's just the way it was. Um, and it, it was a bit of a sad week, really. Yeah, I mean, there was a couple of the Scottish guys and one of the English pairs that didn't get in for a similar rule uh, from their return flight to Swiss. Um, and I think, you know, it was, it's important to kind of look at it. Like you say, not, it happened to the Indonesian team and that was a huge um, loss for the tournament, but it happened to quite a few other players and it's happened to players when they've, we've come back from events and then someone on the flight has had it, we've missed weeks of training um, and it's just like Marcus said, it is the law at the moment. Um, and in Orleans, you know, yeah, I think yeah, it was in mixed, it was quite a lot in mixed players, doubles, yeah. I think almost half the draw was gone. And it's just the world we're in at the moment, and hopefully soon it'll pass. Um, but yeah, it's, that was, it was just a tough one. <laughs> yeah, it was a very strange one. I think, you know, for me, it was important to remember that everybody that was typing those things were just a very small percentage of the people mm. that actually watch badminton um, you know a lot of the time you get really positive like 99 percent of the comments and things i get are so positive and so lovely but in that moment in the passion in the misunderstanding and all of that sort of thing people that one percent were taking up their phones and saying things that they shouldn't be saying um, but actually there's still a 99 percent that are upset about the situation but not saying anything not kind of being aggressive towards people and it's just hard in those times that you know, have to remember the people that um, there's people that are angry about it, but not directly at you. But they don't take to the phone and say it's not your fault. If you know, do you know what I mean? Um, it's the people that are passionate and aren't understanding it. That small number mm. that make a big noise. Um, and so it was a very strange week. It was a very different side of social media, um, but it's uh, definitely nice when it blew over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because Marcus, you mentioned the keyboard warriors. Of, of course, it's easy to just uh, sit behind that screen. Uh, I'm not going to rephrase any of these comments because a lot of them was actually quite harsh, but also quite threatening. Are you guys nervous for traveling to Asia in the coming upcoming future? No, in ter not in terms of me, COVID, but in terms of related to these comments. No, I, I'm, I'm not worried. Um, as Lauren said, I think a lot of it is in the heat of the moment. People are saying, you know, maybe some th even th threatening words to you. I, I, I think it's quite empty. I don't think they really mean it, and they're just angry about the situation. So I'm not, you know, my next trip to Indonesia, I'll, I'm sure I'll be there, you know, and I want to play there, and I, and I hope the Indonesians want to play at the All England. Um, and I think we just need to try and get past it and you know, not make a too big a thing about it. Guys, you guys are also a couple of court. Everybody knows that by now. Uh, a few of your followers does not. <laughs> we, we spoke about that last. Try to make we, it clear. We, we, we spoke about it last week, actually, you and I, so, but it's, it's still quite funny. But yes, they are. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but guys, one thing is uh, to be professional. One thing is also to be private people. In the last 16 months, you have been home a lot. You have not traveled a lot. Uh, how has that been, actually, for you guys off court, knowing that, okay, we're not going to pack the bag, travel again, pack the bag, travel again. We're going to stay here, and we're going to stay exactly here. Um, it was definitely intense, you know, I think the first few months it was very novel and quite enjoyable and not going to airports and packing bags was nice, um, but you know, very quickly missed a training, missed competing, um, you know, started to miss kind of the adrenaline rush of badminton um, and we spent a lot of time together. I think I went to Orlean and we didn't play a mix there and that was the first time I think since probably before All England that we weren't in the same place, which is mad, um, but healthy. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, you know, I think, you know, we coped really well with it. Um, we are used to being together quite a lot already. Um, it's just that, you know, you do normally have weekends separate or evenings separate and that kind of disappeared. Um, but, you know, we motivated each other a lot through lockdown. Um, and I think having each other was much more beneficial than mm -hmm. having been uh, on our own. Um, so, you know, I think 
Mo I don't really think there was any big blow-ups or anything like that that I can remember. Uh -huh. You know, we're quite respectful of each other's space. Um, and you know, we we knew when we needed to kind of one of us go for our daily exercise in that direction, the other one do it in that direction. Um, so you know, it was intense, um, but I think it was it was definitely better that we were together than than not. We are sitting in, in Kiev, Ukraine right now. Uh, we've been in isolation, or you guys and myself, been since like Friday last week. Uh, today is Wednesday. Um, seeing that hotel room, that's basically where you can go. Then you can go eat. You're allowed to be outside for 15 minutes. Doesn't it get a bit annoying uh, to always be around your private partner? To be honest, Martin. I think it gets it gets to the point where you almost don't really know that much different. So you know that that is just what you do. That is your life. Um, just like for some people, you know, they go like this when they go to work. They come back together in the evening. For us, it's just that this is what it is, right? And we're always together, uh, and that just seems normal. Um, and I'm, you know, there are a few couples in badminton. I'm sure they feel quite similar. And and if and if you don't, it it probably isn't going to work out, um, especially on the badminton court. <laughs> yeah, and I assume that's something that you realize pretty easy and pretty pretty early in that relationship. Can this work out? Or can this not? Yeah, I think um, you know we were pa badminton partners before we were mm -hmm. a couple. Um, so you know we knew that the court side of things could work, and then it was kind of. If this relationship doesn't work, we're going to ruin this thing as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think we are quite good at kind of stepping off the court and leaving things. You know, if we need to have a discussion about something or a difficult conversation, it'll happen kind of quite soon after. And then we can both kind of brush it under the carpet and get on with things. Um, I think that separation and that kind of switching from one to another, I think we are quite good at. Um, you know, we don't sit at home and talk about badminton all the time. Um, you know, we've got Luna as a distraction and, you know, like you go home for training and she's there all happy. And if, if you had a bad training session together, then it's kind of forgotten when you walk in the door and, and stuff like that. So I think, you know, you, you definitely get used to it. And um, I think, like Marcus says, if it, if it wasn't going to work, you would know very early on um, because the, the tension after a bad training session or a bad tournament or whatever would be uh, palpable. Mm. <laughs> Two minutes left on the clock, guys. and and, and I know, Lauren, you got your vaccine, at least the first shot. Uh, Marcus, you told me the other day that you didn't get yours yet, uh, but hopefully soon. Uh, the, t the world is hopefully turning into more, a more normal place for, for everybody soon. What is the things that you're looking the most forward to when, when we are back to a normal life with no mask and no sanitation? Uh, miss, uh, actually miss human, uh, actual human touch, whether it's shaking hands with somebody, hugging your parents or what have you. I actually, you know, you don't feel like you really connect with someone sometimes unless you actually make a, you know, touch in some way. Um, you know, at the end of a match, I, I hate just being like, thanks. Like, you know, and because there's no, you know, there's no, there's, there's no communication there between anybody and all the way through to my family, um, not being able to hug. So for me, that's probably the biggest thing I'm most looking forward to. Yeah, I think family is number one. Um, you know, I've missed them a lot. I saw them for the first time in about five months uh, and I just felt like rejuvenated, like a new person. Um, so I think that's the biggest one for me. But I think also coming to these countries, you know, we're so lucky to travel, but the minute we might as well be in England, you know, you're in a hotel room and you're in a restaurant and you're in a hall. And it's, you know, I love going to coffee shops and restaurants and experiencing the culture and, you know, in, enjoying the kind of big upside of what we do. Um, so I definitely miss that a lot and, and would look forward to that going. Let's hope that the three of us can take a coffee in the near future. That'd be good. Nice. That would be nice. Very and not, nice. not yeah. in a hotel for sure. No. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much for watching the BC podcast and go give them a like on their social media. I promise you conference from Lauren Marcus. <laughs> that, Marcus, Marcus will be recording it for sure. Uh, you can also give Marcus a like if you love to. But uh, thanks for watching. Uh, and guys, again, appreciate that you're coming. Uh, and good luck also for not only the tournament where we are right now, but also for sure for the, for the upcoming months and, fu and the future, of course. Follow us on uh, social media. Thanks for joining the BC Podcast. <laughs>